I have with me the chief of the Defence Research and Development Organisation, Dr. Saraswat, to talk about a range of things. Dr. Saraswat, what is happening on the Agni series of missiles now? What is the next phase? Agni series of missiles are in advanced stage of production. Today, as you remember, we have uh, completed development of Agni 1, Agni 2, Agni 3. Agni 4 and Agni 5 are in advanced stage of development. And uh, this year you will see two more launches of Agni 5, which will culminate its complete development activity and it will be led to production. Agni 4 is already getting into the production mode. So with this Agni 1, Agni 2, Agni 3, Agni 4 and Agni 5 getting into the production mode, the next logical corollary for as far as the long-range ballistic missile deterrence capability of this country is concerned, we will switch over to force multiplication. Force multiplication in the case of ballistic missiles is by way of MIRV. Our Meaning one missile which can carry which can many carry, warheads. Carry multiple warheads. Our uh, design activity on the development and development and production of MIRV is in advanced stage today. We are designing the MIRVs, we are integrating it with the Agni 4 and Agni 5 missiles and that will also give us the capability to cover a vast area plus deliver in the event of any activity a required number of payloads at the required so, time. So will the next test be with a multiple warhead system? Or? No, the present two tests which we, I have was mentioning, they will be only with the, the normal configuration of Agni 5. But uh, there will be experimental tests in which we will be uh, testing the MIRV capability. So that would be what, Agni 6 or Agni 6 is, no, is something No, we are, we are not naming it Agni 6 or Agni 5, but it will be Agni 5 missile with MIRVs. So Agni 5 plus. You Which can name Agni 5 plus or Agni 6, but certainly it is not Agni 6. It is not Agni 6, yes. but Agni 5 where there will be multiple warheads. Yes, yes. So we can have a, a single missile going and hitting several targets yes, at the same time. Yes, it will be in that category. In that category. Now, you also need a certain platform for, for your nuclear triad. Now, what is happening on the Arihant uh, submarine? How soon can we see criticality and commissioning? Arihan development is in advanced stage. Last year we saw the culmination of the development trials of BO5 which was launched from the pontoon and it completed all its objectives. It is under production today. As far as the platform is concerned, it is also in advanced stage today. I must say that in a couple of weeks you will see that it will go into criticality and from there onwards the commission exercise will start. Criticality meaning that the nuclear reactor which is on board at, uh, INS Arihant yes. will be started yes. and the, the submarine itself will be powered by the Indian made nuclear reactor, is that what you are telling yes, me? Yes, absolutely. So, so, so when, when can, how soon can we see that? I think it should happen in next two to three weeks. Next two to three weeks, the INS Arihant, the nuclear reactor will be started yeah. and the nuclear chain reaction will start working in INS Arihant. So it will become like a self-propelled vehicle then. See, criticality means the reactor gets into operation and that is the most important thing for any nuclear system. Whether it's a reactor or it's a power plant for a nuclear submarine, it's a very important event as, as the designers, as the builders of these platforms are concerned. So, so what, what next? When can we see it going after, in for full-fledged trials? After that, we get into the trial mode. We have a very, very evolved program in which many trials of this system will be done with the uh, submarine moving into the right operational mode and then also trying out the weapons and equipments. There is a, a, there's a series of tests which are required to be carried out in this case. So you are happy with INS Arihant as it stands? We are extremely happy because it is a major uh, technology breakthrough for the country. And uh, as far as the indigenous capability is concerned, I must say that India has reached one of the major milestones in the field of complex technologies of uh, nuclear powered submarines. Now, there is a lot of talk of indigenization now, that everything should be made in India, even if the procurement is, then it should be made in India, or the technology development should be in India. Now, is the Defence Research and Development Organisation in a position to deliver in without time delays and cost overruns? I think a shift in India's policy as far as the acquisition of defence equipment is concerned from buy global to buy Indian 
as a preferential mode of uh, procurement is a very very welcome and a good shift because it will give major boost to the development and production of indigenous equipments and participation of the Indian industry in a big way. Obviously, this will also have a major role to play for as far as DRDO is concerned. DRDO when in, under this umbrella of by Indian will have tremendous opportunities for tying up with industry, tying up with academic institutions and tying up even with global players for delivering systems and products and equipments as desired by the armed forces. When we integrate ourselves with the industry, obviously that acts as a force multiplication in terms of our capability and capacity. This will also reduce the time to develop things and also maybe control the cost. So, in effect you are saying DRDO and India are ready for this huge new push on indigenization? It's a beginning, I must say that it's a beginning because a shift from buy global to buy Indian requires readiness of the industry to participate in this kind of a venture. Obviously, there will be some time required for the industry to gear up for these challenges. What is required is investment in the Indian industry in major areas of technologies that would ensure that when DRDO goes to these industries with their designs, they are capable to absorb and produce it in large numbers. Or tomorrow, even if they tie up with global players, international players, because that is also one of the modes of operation, then they should be in a position to absorb the technology and use the technology to build new weapons, not only those which they are collaborating with, but those which are required in an innovative process for the country. But DRDO is known for delays. If it goes Indian, then it will, everything will be delayed. No, DRDO will use this as an opportunity for cutting down the delay and also using the industry as our extended arm so that we can control delays, we can control development of technologies, we can control production and we also will be able to use our technology to augment the capability and capacity of the Indian industry. Now, there is a lot of concern with this incursion by the Chinese. Now, you have certain technologies, the unmanned aerial vehicles, did we use them? Why did we not learn about these incursions? Or is there something under development at DRDO which can help India at least learn ahead of time or when the incursion is happening? Yeah, we have number of technologies and we are using our UAVs, we are using our surveillance systems. In fact, we have um, uh, kept a few UAVs in our labs in the lay area and we are in a position to see what is happening in that system. In fact, if you had heard that there was certain, some kind of a UFO which was visible in the past and uh, all the people in that region were trying to find out what is it. We did use our UAVs to find out what is happening. We put our direct optical cameras, we put our devices to check that. Similar possibilities are there for land incursions also where we can use UAVs, we can use our radars, we can use our uh, bottle, battlefield surveillance radars, we can use our border security radars to find out what is happening. But as far as the incursions which presently have taken place, these are not new, these used to take place earlier also. But the way the incursion has taken place now certainly is an alarming bell for us. But are you you're saying you are deploying your technology for this current incursion also? to learn more to do surveillance on it. Yeah, we are having our UAVs in that area. They are yeah. operational yeah. even yeah. as we, we are speaking. We, we, can, we, can, we can utilize them today. We have not integrated with our armed forces today because they are experimental UAVs which are used for our application. But certainly it can generate the required data for the purpose of uh, our surveillance activity. There is some concern in people that India's nuclear deterrence is more a political statement than actually a statement of fact. Now, you are the head of DRDO. DRDO was involved in the Pokhran 2 blasts in a very big way and you are developing many technologies. What do you have to say? Do we have the capability or is it all bluster? I think all such statements are out of ignorance. India has a very, very robust and systematic deterrence capability both in terms of weapon platforms as well as in terms of the required payloads. India has a 
industry to support it. India has the mechanism to control, store, uh, mobilize and also use it whenever it is needed. Plus India has a very robust doctrine on these matters. It is a structured system which controls the entire deterrence activity which starts from the highest body in the country to all the operational units which are essential for um, exercising this deterrence. The notion which many of the analysts are having are purely based upon their uh, perception of things and comparisons with other countries. I think every country does the deterrence capability based upon its capacity, based upon its threat, evolve, uh, evolving threat and also what is the ecosystem and the environment in which this deterrent has to work. So one need not go on comparative basis whether a country A has a better one or B has a better one. It is what India needs. Do we have that? And I can assure you that India has the required deterrence capability in all its form. The triad is getting completed and uh, I have no doubts that we will be uh, matching the best in the world. So DRDO, Department of Atomic Energy, the Indian Armed Forces together can protect India in a big way if there is a nuclear threat to India? I can assure you of that. 100%? 100%. Average citizens don't need Average to worry, citizens. I can sleep well. You can sleep well, the country can sleep well, that Indian scientists, Indian industries, Indian armed forces and Indian deterrence mechanism are fully in place and we have nothing to fear of. So that was Dr. Saraswat telling us, don't fear, sleep well, we have the capability to deter all our threatening neighbours. With Manoj Thakur in New Delhi, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.